be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come. See the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers, to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear faithful, on an evening like this, with all the beauty of the liturgy, it's hard to exaggerate, but also hard to put into words the joy of the church tonight throughout the world and all the churches throughout the world that celebrates the resurrection and celebrates the resurrection after a long but wonderful pilgrimage that began at Ash Wednesday in which the Lord invited us to make a pilgrimage with him in which he showed to us his mercy, his deep charity and love for us, and also revealed ourselves to ourselves. And the nature of sin in our lives, and the nature of sin in the world, and the condition of sin in which we live. And also the need, the absolute need that every one of us has to seek our salvation only in Christ. And how frustrated we become, and what kind of a dead end it is whenever we seek salvation or seek true happiness in anything else but the one who's created us and the one who knows us from the very beginning. And this was the great joy that we went through Lent with and a slow, careful, patient and revealing of ourselves that Christ did in the midst as we carried those graces right through until we started to begin this celebration of Holy Week. And as we began with the Chrism Mass, but especially on Thursday night, we dedicated ourselves to placing our confidence in the cross itself. 
and that confidence was based on the readings we have tonight in which with quiet hearts, as the church said in the prayer that began this, with quiet hearts, we listen to the words of God in the past and we meditate on the great things that he has done for humanity. In the midst of even those things, the far greater things that he does in the resurrection of Christ, in his salvation and in his sacrifice for us. And on that Thursday night and into Friday, we saw the great length of Christ's love for us, how far he would go in washing our feet and in giving his very life for our sake. And as much as we saw that suffering and the passion of Christ itself, underlying all that was his love for us. And it was that, plus the testimony of everything he had done in the past, everything he had done for ourselves as we went through this Lenten pilgrimage with him, gave us the confidence to put our trust in the cross itself. And that's not an easy thing to do, but it's the thing that was asked of us. And tonight, we complete, really, the last phrase of something that's been given to us since the second century by a wonderful anonymous author of North Africa, a name that we'll never know, but it's nice in this age of people always seeking popularity and to put their name forward, that this wonderful phrase comes from someone who is unknown to us, a Christian of the second century, 18 centuries ago, in which he said, they are happy who put their trust in the cross and plunge into the waters of baptism. You can see the deep meaning of that, and that's why, regardless of any name, that there's no name attached to it. Its simplicity and the depths of its meaning captures everything that we've been through in these days and that we celebrate tonight. Having put our confidence in the cross, now we are able to plunge into the waters of baptism. And that's the task for all of us tonight, especially included some before us who will be baptized but it's the task for all of us tonight because we renew our baptismal promises, each one of us, at whatever stage of our lives, we were baptized into Christ's grace. And as Paul reminded us today in the reading, we've been baptized into his death. Almost coming back to where we were, we put our confidence in the crucifixion and the cross, in the power of Christ's victory, and then we plunge ourselves into the waters of baptism, which is plunging ourselves into the reality of his sacrifice for us so that we can die with him. And in dying with him, we share the resurrection with him as well. And that then becomes the reason for our great joy. We have put our faith in the cross and in doing so, we put our faith in Christ, his love for us that never, never ends and that always remains for us and his mercy that captures all of creation for the Father. And in putting our faith in Christ, we make a profession of who he is, the Son of God, a God who is one and three, and whose Son came is born among ourselves, a born of a virgin, in like us in all things but sin, and lived among us fully human and fully divine, and in what he does tonight and what we celebrate is able to capture all of humanity and all of creation to his wondrous mystery in giving his life on the cross and in raising everything back to the Father again, which was the very reason why the Father asked him and sent him here. And we see nothing but absolute grace, absolute love, and everything that the Father has shown to us in the person of his Son, who makes his presence known to us in a very special way tonight. And the power of his resurrection becomes evident for us tonight in the power of the baptisms that take place. This is the power that recreates the person, recreates as Christ is created from the very beginning. And it's something we don't see within ourselves, but resides within this person, a seal that never goes away because baptism will never be repeated again. And that's why the rest of us renew our baptismal promises tonight. But a seal which captures one for Christ and overcomes all sin and everything that is past and before. And overcomes with all the sacraments that follow upon, including confirmation which will be received tonight, 
in the receiving of the Eucharist for the first time tonight, all the gifts, the medicines, the nourishment to allow us to go through this life, striving to live with Christ, striving always to remain within his love, and knowing still, even in the midst of this age in which we celebrate the resurrection, the precariousness of our own nature and our absolute dependence on Christ and his resurrection. This is the reason for our great joy tonight, for those who are here before us, their families, all those who have marked their way in whatever way, those who have gone before them already and passed to the Lord, who have left graces that the Lord has shown through everyone here in this church, through other people, and in the graces that are part of the communion, of the community of what we are, not just now in the present, but going past and into the future. And Christ is the one who controls it all. Christ is the one who is the master. Christ is the one who is the savior. And the challenge for us is to allow him to be the savior, to place ourselves under his mission of saving us, and finally give up this dream we have in our own minds that we will create our own heaven for ourselves or our own Garden of Eden here for ourselves and accomplish it ourselves. And tonight in the baptism, in living with Christ, we give up all of that. And through the nourishment of the sacraments that we receive through the rest of our lives, we dedicate ourselves to allowing Christ to save us and allowing ourselves to put ourselves under his mission of salvation for each one of us. This is the great joy that we take into the night tonight. It's the joy that we will see in the sacraments that will be bestowed very, very quickly and very soon now and the joy of the faith that every one of us professes in Christ, risen from the dead. Alleluia. Amen.